Illinois the higher seed so they'll wear the home whites and they have beaten Michigan the last 10 times they have wear, worn the home whites. They control the tap. Gill is 13. Bardo next to him is 35. Will bring it up and set the table. Hamilton out high. The Illini always picking up at the top of that circle and they go to their half court set. This is not a spectacular shooting team. They get a lot of it off offensive rebounds. They are great jumpers. None better than battle number 33. He's playing with Mills down inside. Mills has him by about four inches. Gill called for an offensive foul. Ted Hillary is our referee from Grand Rapids, Michigan. The umpires are David Jones from Gainesville, Florida, and Tom Harrington from Chico, California. Michigan's first possession. And the Illini set up their full court press. And Battle Garden on the end line, one of the best at that position I've ever seen. Here comes Robinson. He'll take it all the way, and it's knocked away and out of bounds. We're going to talk about a lot of superlatives uh, on these two ball clubs. Ramil, Ramil Robinson probably goes to the hole as a guard as well as anybody that's played in college ball in quite some time. There he is inside for the game's first field goal. Bardo, 35. What's going to be interesting early on is Bradley. Illinois to see what Michigan team they're playing against, because this Michigan team emotionally is a lot different than the one they faced a few weeks ago. Fisher. Over on the sideline for the Wolverines. Bardo on Rice. And even with the switches, <laughs> Illinois will not be mismatched because they're all about the same size. Now you see Battle on Rice. Now Mills goes to work from the baseline. Misses, hustling after, loose. Michigan, Rice missing, and there's contact underneath. The first foul on Loy Vaught. Glenn Rice rushed that Alex shot Jordan a little bit. Granny uh, had Illinois plenty of time inside, but he knows Rice. how quick on the interior defense Illinois is, and that might have caused him to put it up a little too quick. Straight man to man. Four Illinois starters from the Chicago area. Rich as any talent bet in the country. Battle up with that jump shot, that left-handed jumper. He's a transfer out of Northern Illinois. This is his senior year down in Champaign. Robinson cut off by Gill. Now draws the double team. Comes back after it's deflected and stays with it. And Illinois got a piece of it, but Michigan with possession and Rice misses the three. Out of bounds, Michigan's ball. Second shot that Glenn Rice rushed a little bit. And you notice Kenny Battle on that last press chased Robinson all the way down the court. He moves to one of his favorite spots and bangs in the three. Much better balance on that shot. And it was a two. They said that he was up on that line. That is not a three. Nick Anderson missing. And bought down with the rebound for the Wolverines. They lead it 4-2 here in the early going. Rice again. And it limbs in and out and Hamilton yanks it away. Gill is ahead on the left, but Bardo did not want to try the dangerous pass. Instead, he buries the three. Very underrated player. Takes the toughest assignment on defense, but can hit the shot from the outside and a good ball handler. Kind of a forward guard. You know, nobody on this team really has a set position. Griffin always looking for the pass. They were sloughing off the spot misses. And Illinois with four white jerseys crashing to the defensive board that time. They'll send four at the offensive end frequently too. Battle wants it. He thinks he can take Mills one on one with his quickness. He drew the personal. That's what happened in the first two games. Illinois averaging better than 90 points and hitting 55% while holding Michigan to 47. Everything with Lou Henson starts at the defensive end. You know what, Brennan, when you look at Michigan statistically this year, playing basically against the same competition, they're shooting 57% from the field. They're shooting 47% from the three-point line, 73% from the foul line. I don't know if we've had a better statistical ball club shooting-wise than Michigan in a long time. Illinois not bothered by the jitters here early. They've hit two or three. Michigan only two of nine, but Michigan's done a good job on the glass in the early going. Griffin is going to have to put up a shot. They're not playing him at all defensively. 
Illinois ball. Over to battle, looking for daylight. Pulls it up. Well, we've mentioned this before. Now, watch this press. Battle is the best that I've seen. He knows and makes the determination if he wants to double team or not right off the bat. Gill reached in, forced the turnover. Anderson comes back. Nice fake. And he drew the foul from Griffin. Now, when they substitute for Griffin, they'll get Sean Higgins probably off that Michigan bench over there. Fisher will have to try that rotation. Well, I think he'll wait a while Mike before Griffin he does first, that because Griffin zero. gives him the better defense until the game settles down. I, I felt that Ramil tripped a little bit. Yes, he did. See, he tripped on Gill's ankle, and that's what put him to the floor rather than a steal. And on this Illinois club, seven or players have 20 or more steals on the year, so anybody can attack the ball in this club. Illinois with an early lead, 10 to 4. And Rice is one of four from the field. Robinson is one of three. The automatic switch on every pick. Bot from the right baseline, his first field goal. Bot did not start in this South Alabama game, but he has had a great season. Keeping it alive at the offensive end and back to Kendall Gill with that smooth jump shot. You notice another thing Illinois does, they can send five men to the board, but normally four, and their guards, Bardo and Gill, are great offensive rebounders. Mills is free underneath. It won't stay down. Gill's got it in the middle. Michigan's back defensively. Terry Mills should have gone for the dunk on that play and not worried about getting his shot blocked. Battle's got him on his hip. They can get him the ball anytime they want to. That's dangerous. Here comes Battle. Backed away by Bott, hands off to Robinson. Illinois with that great team quickness back defensively. So Robinson pulls up the jump shot. Two field goals for Ramil here in the first half. It's 12-8, Illinois. That's what he's doing better now with his experience as a point guard, is pulling up on that break instead of taking everything to the hole where he was drawing a lot of charges. And that is Gill. Some good back picks by Illinois. Tough team to guard because everybody is so interchangeable. They set the screen, they're all quick. There they set the, you set a screen and they switch, and you've got a man on you just like the one you left. Maybe as good a switching defensive team as there has been in college basketball this season. Nice pump fake. Griffin puts it up outside, not getting some firepower from that spot. Off into the hands of battle. Not got a bounce, and it's Illinois' ball. We've got a timeout. Anderson drawing the foul. And that on Griffin is his second personal foul. Talking to Denny Crum yesterday, he said that he felt that Illinois is the best interior passing team that any of his clubs have ever faced. We just saw an example of that. Sean Higgins in the Sean game Higgins at 14 37. He ambushed Virginia with 31 points during that regional final down in Lexington. They certainly expected Rice to explode on them, but not Sean Higgins off Coach Fisher's bench. And I think in the case of Higgins, if you're Steve Fisher, you're praying over there he hits his first one because he's a player that has been up and down this year. He's had a stretch of six games, seven games where he couldn't score at all, then can explode for 31 against a club like Carolina. They turned it over. And Smith had just checked into the game for Coach Henson. That is Larry Smith. He's a junior from Alton, Illinois. Every scholarship player on the Fighting Illini hails from that state. Smith had eight points and six assists the last time these two clubs played, so you can see what Coach Henson's thinking about. Hamilton steps out, uses the screen by Anderson, doesn't get it to fall. And Vaught off with the rebound. Vaught and Hughes are up front. Mills is out right now for Michigan. Basically playing with all forwards, no low postmen. Now you see they've got an open offense. Vaught was short. Illinois rebound. Smith bringing it up on Robinson. 
game a little fast paced for Michigan right now. Favors Illinois because they can't get Rice in their half court offense. Foul is against Robinson, his first of the game. And that is the team's fifth. In talking to Coach Henson yesterday, you got the feeling that he was Alex extremely Jones, confident. You know, a lot of coaches are very wary Pittsburgh's when they have beaten Smith. someone twice and they're trying to do it a third time. We Eric did not Cole. get that impression from Henson at all. He liked the matchups. He thinks that this Illinois team is one of the hardest working teams he's ever been around. Knocked away from Hamilton, but he's got it back. Yeah, he foul. Mills who had returned, but he has not called for it. Right, Higgins got him from behind. Let's see if there's some screen set to get Rice going. Higgins will try it himself. Anderson, who had 16 rebounds against Syracuse, yanked that one down. Simeon High School. The three from Bardo is short. Michigan with Hughes rebounding, getting it into Robinson's hands. Down by eight. Illinois 16, Michigan 8. 13 minutes remaining here in the first half. Here's that box. And a block against Illinois. Smith's first. It was a foul on Smith, but boy, did he move Bell his feet on that particular play because Robinson Smith, made the good crossover dribble seven. and he almost got there in time. Both teams playing man to man out of bounds. Higgins goes one on one for the second time and Smith yanks it away. Wanted Anderson, he went jumping up and collided and he may be called for the foul. She is. Even if it's unintentional, Nick, it's still a foul. Yeah, it was a foul. He made, if you make the contact to gain an advantage, which is exactly what happened on that play, it's got to be a foul. Ball slipped out of Smith's hands. He had a pretty good chance on the break to convert. And since Illinois has not been scoring of late, they've not been able to get into their press. And Higgins finds the three-point range. His first field goal. He's not shy, is he? No, he isn't. Uh, and that's a good sign, too, because he missed the first three, put up there, and came right back, showing that he's got that confidence level. Anderson got around Rice and reached back in, but he has turned it over on the dribble. And Anderson frustrated right now. Well, one of the things we're seeing here by Michigan is some excellent defense because they're making Illinois do everything one-on-one. -on -one. They've gotten out of their pattern. You notice Higgins stayed back so that there was a pass available to Robinson just in case he got double teamed. Here's Rice. Count it. Oh, some stroke, isn't it? They've gone a long time without going for a set pattern to get Glenn Rice open. He's two of five in this game. Battle is two of three. Hamilton has missed all four of his shots so far. Bardo trying to get it inside along the baseline, and he was fouled by Higgins. Game two of our national semifinal earlier today. Seton Hall eliminated Duke. Seton Hall will play the winner of this one Monday night. You notice now, Irvin Small, Billy, excuse me, the 6'7 junior from Simeon. Same high school that produced Anderson and also the late Ben Wilson and Marcus Liberty. Another of the talented players out of that particular area. He's out of King High School in Chicago, a sophomore. He'll let Anderson have a little break right here. He's been frustrated looking for his first field goal in this game. I think that Nick was a little bit impatient offensively, and that's a good reason to sit him down, let him relax. You notice the last two times down the floor, Illinois set up in a pattern, a little box pattern, to get away from that one-on-one -on -one play. And the refs uh, have warned Nick on the floor about uh, throwing any wild elbows underneath, so a strong move by Henson just to let him take a little blow and he'll be back soon. 18-13, Illinois with the lead. Robinson bringing it up against Prusher, gets it into Rice's hands. Mills whips the pass to Higgins. Yanked away now by Illinois. Smith wanted to come to Liberty down the baseline. 
But he threw it right into the passing lane where Rice was. That's nice, smart play defensively by Rice, keeping his eye on the ball and his man. Glenn Rice starting to be more active, moving without the ball now to try to get open. And Hughes hits the jump shot. And Michigan holds to within three at the 10.57 mark. As I said, Brent, Illinois going to find this is a different Michigan team than the one they played in Ann Arbor. Liberty moving to his left that time. Missing in the corner. Michigan running it down. And they pick it up on the move. And here's Rice. The pull up. Oh. If kids are watching and want to know the fundamentals of shooting a jump shot as far as squaring up with your body and your feet, and then the follow through with your hands. Nobody's doing it any better than Glenn Rice. Back to a lot of internal screening now goes Illinois. Small one to get it in deep, and he does to Smith. Shot is not there, so they go back to Bardo. Liberty punches in low to battle. Yanked away by Mills. Michigan doing a good job of rebounding, not letting Illinois play volleyball in this game. It's 18 17. Wolverines can take the lead. This is a 12 2 run over the last four minutes by Michigan. Robinson free. Great head fake. He throws small with a good head fake and ball fake on that move. Michigan up one at the 9 30 mark. And much of this has been accomplished with Kendall Gill over there on the Illinois sideline. He's coming back in here shortly, try to get something going on the perimeter. You can see the defense is now packing back inside the foul line because nobody's taking the outside jump shot. The Illinois weakness. They search and search for that perimeter shooter. Vaught will check in for Michigan, and Gill returns for Illinois. We've got a timeout. The outgoing commissioner of the Big Ten. Wayne Duke, and he was telling me that back in 1979, when Michigan State won the national championship, they took home less dollars from that tournament than schools like Northwestern will receive this year because of the great success of the five teams from the Big Ten, two of them getting all the way to the championship round. And Brent give him and a guy by the name of Willis Casey a great deal of credit for the guys behind expanding the tournament, taking multiple teams from given conferences and moving people geographically out of their areas. Ball movement on the inside gives Illinois an easy field goal after a timeout, sign of good coaching. Smith comes up with it. It comes to press. Now you notice Battle that time said, okay, Ramil Robinson's got a good angle, so I won't double team. Battle makes that decision on his own. Higgins, very confident young man of the Los Angeles area. Rice coming down the baseline. Now this is something we did not see out of Terry Mills throughout the course of the season and, and in his collegiate career. A very confident post move. He makes the move. He sees Rice coming back door, makes the great dish. And of course, Rice, who you anticipate is going to stay out on the perimeter, made the good backdoor cut. Excellent play by Terry Mills, who is long forecast to be one of the key players in the country. Rice completes the three-point shot. He's hit his last three from the field. He's up to nine points, averaging better than 30 for the tournament. And he has given the Wolverines a two-point lead inside of eight and a half minutes in the first half. Fisher barking defensive calls out. They get it into Hamilton low, knocked away by Higgins and out of bounds. Brent, I don't know if Higgins realized what defense they were supposed to be in that time, but it worked out perfectly for his club. He was playing a little one-man zone. Now they go back to man-to-man -to -man on the out-of-bounds situation. Kenny Battle would like a lob. Anderson, who has returned, doubled up, so they move it around to Smith. Smith glides. Vaught has control. Now it's Robinson. Back to Mills, who's running the break to Higgins. Terry Mills brings the break. That's a six foot ten guard. I'm looking one way, passing another play. Look at Fisher over there barking out defensive calls to this team. Indeed, what a different Michigan team playing defense, rushing out on Hamilton. 
guarding up on the glass, not giving Illinois offensive rebounds. Now it's Robinson. And wisely pulls up. A few weeks ago, he had tried to take that all the way and draw the charge. Rice on the turnaround. Fought going for the offensive rebound, lost control, Illinois ball. Fred, I want to check this defense down the other end because Michigan looks like they're throwing something at Illinois that they're not sure of right now. We see Ramil Robinson's playing his man. Higgins is playing a little bit of a zone. Looks like they're playing. A, you know what that is? It's, it's a three, three and Anderson two, right. Comes up. They're playing a triangle and two. The battle coming down the line and got a foul. And on Mills, his second. Bardo is returned. Battle hits the free throw. And it's 24-21. You know, it really discontinues. We just take a pencil and, and erase that name interim at halftime. <laughs> well, I would think that that decision has already been made one way or the other because uh, Steve Fisher worked there for seven years. They ought to know what he's capable of doing even before he took this team to the Final Four. Higgins. Fought's got an offensive rebound. Well, it's a big team that Michigan has on the floor, and the size advantage is starting to tell right now. Rice missing. He had a hand in his face that time. Hamilton brings it down. Illinois not getting it done here at the offensive end. They trail it by two. They've hit only one of their last ten shots. Turn it over again. Here they come. Off Mills to Rice. Rice. He was too close. He should have backed it up about 20 feet. And Bo says, how can you not bang that one in? You talk about a football man who's become a basketball fan here in the last three weeks. Yeah, what was his initial comment? Randy said he'd rather be watching spring football, but he's changed his tune in the last three weeks. Demetrius Caleb in for the first time here today. What was it Bo said in that uh, television tape that I saw that was uh, filmed by one of the Detroit stations? We want Illinois. Oh no, he said yesterday in practice, Bo, you got us. So here we go. Bardo's got it. Open man is Gill. Caleb will take a foul, give him the basket and bring him to the free throw line. I thought Caleb was going to let him have the field goal. If you're going to do that, wrap him up and don't let him shoot it. And Steve Fisher going to talk to him a little bit just to calm him down over there. And it was not good judgment. Now, Ramil Robinson lost the handle. Very smart play by Bardo, realizing that Gill had already broken long. And if you're Caleb right in this one, your best bet is just to let, let the man lay it up. Now, Henson's back with his starting rotation. Gill is giving him a lead. You would expect Fisher would want to finish with a rotation somewhat similar to this. Oh, nice. lays it up at the That's other end. Line. His Number second field goal. Line. That was a difficult shot, catching the ball, and before you come down, lay it up because you're going so hard on to the basket. And here they are. They're matching up in that back line out of a little 1-3-1, one, one, and they're playing Kenny Battle man-to-man. -man. Anderson looking into Gill. Battle went down, and that foul is against Hughes. And Hughes is telling the official that he was grabbing my jersey. Well, you can see Hughes going to take Kenny Battle. He's playing him one-on-one. -on -one. Now Kenny sets the solid screen for Gill coming back over the side, and Hughes runs right over him. For Illinois, Kenny Battle shooting one-on-one. That's a nice offensive maneuver to get Gill free right there because you assume Battle's running to the corner. When he peels back to set the screen, it's tough to defend. Michigan continues to do a superb job rebounding. They're staying dead even with the fighting Illini. <laughs> Caleb off the fake. Hangs. Short Vought puts it back. Won't stay down. And Battle was hammered as he came away with that rebound. But as Kenny Battle's second leap was a quick one. They worked the baseline with Anderson. All Big Ten players showed you why on that one. That was a power move, wasn't it? Robinson. Steve Fisher has Rice on the sideline, really needs him into the game right now. Hughes threw an elbow to knock Battle's hands away, and he picks up his second personal foul. 
Mills with two, Griffin with two, and Higgins with two along with you. Watch the elbow being swung. Fighting for position down here. Hughes trying to hold him off of the elbow. Pretty good acting jab that time by Kenny Battle. And he picks up the foul on it. You know, Illinois have been an excellent free throw shooting team this year, shooting 70%, but in the NCAA tournament, they've been down to 58% from the foul line, and in the last three games, shooting just 50%. Elbows won't be tolerated. What a one. Bangs in the front end. The winner here on this one will take on Seton Hall. Release, guys. Seton Hall advancing 95 78 after trailing by 18 points in the first half. That's some difference also in the shooting percentage. They shoot 71% in the second half, and Duke shoots down under 35. It's a three-point lead by Illinois. Time for Rice to get squared up for another jump shot. Hughes tracks it down. Pardo on Higgins. Robinson with a great pass, and Angie Fisher, the wife of the Michigan coach, appreciated that one. Six points for Vaught. Missing the three, and Vaught knocking the ball away from him. Hamilton at the end line. Now Michigan bringing it up against that Illinois pressure. But so far, not only has he scored six, but he's pulled down nine rebounds in this game for the Wolverines. Higgins has it knocked out of bounds. Michigan's ball. You know, I love what Steve Fisher is doing against that press. He's keeping Higgins all the way back behind Robinson as the outlet pass, which takes away the effectiveness of the battle's double team. Here's Rice. This is a three. Three point basket by Bardo was right in his face. And Bardo brings it back down, and he's cut off at the other end. Michigan leading it by 31 to 29 at the four minute mark of the first half. Michigan back to straight man to man now. Not guarding Kenny Battle when he goes out to set screens. Anderson gets it into Hamilton. And another rebound for Michigan. Hughes and Vaught have really been something off the boards on the inside. So much of Illinois' game built around their success at the offensive rebounding end. Rice with the jump, yanked away by Hamilton. Notice how Gill affected Rice's shot that time, made his elbow fly on out so he didn't have the normal shot. Anderson had to force that Vaught shot again. at the end, didn't have the good shooting stroke with it, did he? But he stays right with it and steals it and comes in with a jam. Big turnaround there because Rice was open on the other end of the floor. Now they've stolen it. And Battle couldn't get it to fall. But the foul is going to go against Michigan. But what a great defensive effort on the last two possessions by Nick Anderson. He had a shot that was out of sync, and he went right back in to get it, and then one out of the corner. Brent, I was watching Steve Fisher on that exchange. He stayed very calm on the sidelines, never showed any emotion at all. The kind of thing that would give your team confidence. That, okay, we made some mistakes, but it's not the end of the world. Maybe one of the reasons these kids like playing for him. Calm expression sitting over there. Great demeanor. Much like P.J. Carlos and all that. Mike Krzyzewski showed the first game. With Hughes out now, Vaught, Mills, Higgins, Rice, and Robinson. There's the switch by Hamilton. Not quick enough for Robinson. Battles his way in and missed the shot, but it was hit last by Illinois. So Michigan can set up a out of bounds play. You know, Brent, that's an exchange that I think Robinson can take advantage of. When Hamilton switches out on him, he ought to pull the ball back out a little further and then take him to the hoop. Great block by Illinois. Gill comes down in the middle. Gets it over to Anderson. Got in a little bit too far. And Ramil Robinson to Higgins, who wanted the jam, and he's taken down by Bardo. Is Higgins showing us something? That was uh, Kenny Battle falling down there, but Higgins is really showing some 
talent. He was a high school All-American that everybody wanted. We know about the Kentucky situation where they were so actively involved in recruiting him. He goes on to, uh, to Michigan, and in so far in the NCAA tournament, particularly in the last week and a half, he has been outstanding. He plays like he's six five, but he's six foot nine with all that quickness. The big Michigan team on the floor: six ten, six nine, six eight, six seven, and Romeo Robinson. So they've got a big advantage in height on Illinois. Carries that jump. Number 25, Nick Anderson. Only five team fouls against Illinois. 2-12 to go. So they've got one to give. Gill picks up Robinson. Here's Ramil in low. Nice fake. Look at that strike. <laughs> the ball fakes throws the entire Illinois defensive squad. Goes against Illinois. Offensive foul. And that's the second on Bardo. Brent, with just a minute and 40 seconds Player to go in foul. this half, Starts Illinois knows this is Bardo. not the Michigan team that they beat twice. It's a, it is a different Number ball. Six, same bodies, Illinois. same uniforms, but a different spirit and emotion. Smith, returns Smith Illinois, returning. Steve Illinois won that first game in Champaign, 96 84, then routed. Michigan and Ann Arbor, very unusual for that to happen. 89 73. Robinson loses it, and Gill scoops it to Smith. One of the few times that Ramil has tried to take the ball too far inside. He's been pulling up on the outside, the top of the key, and getting the offense started. Inside the Mills, as well as he's played, that's his first field goal. He's done some of the little things that folks have wondered about. Passing the ball well, rebounding, playing some defense. Gill now cut off from coming to baseline. Great help by Rice. Smith oh, missed everything, but Anderson was there. And he has scored 11 points, as has Battle. They have led Illinois to a one-point lead. Robinson. Fouled. He'll come to the free throw line. Hamilton got him his first. He's fearless taking that ball to the hoop. Now, when he sees an opening like this, no need to pull up. Nobody can get there to him. He's got the incredible body strength up top. Great quickness and dexterity with the ball. And doesn't mind going in. He's fearless. Doesn't mind going up against anybody. shooting one. Mills sat out his freshman year, as did Mills. Griffin has been sent into the game. And Mills taken out by Michigan for this last second shot opportunity in case they need an additional three-point shooter. And they also do not want Mills to pick up his third foul here in the last 30 seconds. So Fisher, thinking ahead, has taken one of his big men out right now. And Griffin is a good defender, so a good play all the way around by Steve Fisher. Bringing it down. The last shot here of the first half. Illinois trailing it by a point. And here comes Smith. Anderson over Griffin. Bought rebounding. And Michigan leads Illinois at the half. Let's see how the Illini respond after a break and an opportunity of the coaching staff to talk to them and explain that this is not the same Michigan team that they remember, that the team they put away that easily is not going to succumb here this afternoon and just roll over and play dead for them. I agree. And Brent, as far as I'm concerned, Michigan proved that to me in the first five or six minutes of this ball game. It is a different ball club. I saw it for the first time for my own uh, 
observation when they played North Carolina. North Carolina made the runs and they just would not back down. Now Ramil Robinson who's been able to get into that glass several times in the first half. They start Griffin. Vaught is on the inside one of the big rebounds and there is Mills another rebound and an offensive putback for the Wolverines. Now Bardo and Gill along with Anderson Anderson misfiring the Illini cannot afford now to get completely out of sync here in this game the ball was off Gill's foot and out of bounds it's Michigan's ball. How about those hands of Terry Mills not only on the break where we've seen him make some great plays but on that last rebound. Of course Illinois showed two great comebacks against Syracuse in that regional final in Minneapolis. Now they're only down three points here against Michigan. And of course earlier in the year an incredible comeback against a great Missouri ball club. Stepped outside Terry Mills. Terry Mills continuing to play well under Fisher's leadership and didn't go for battles fake. Now he's talking to Battle too on the inside. So Battle brings it in with the jump shot and gets that one by ball. That's a waste of time to talk to Kenny Battle because his last name is exactly the way he plays. He's not going to be intimidated by any conversation. Rice wants it punched in low this time. He'll use the turnaround shot. Off Battle's hand, tries to run it down. Michigan's ball. Glenn might have been in a little too close on that one. <laughs> He'd rather be out there about uh, 22 or 3 feet. Some of the Big Ten folks will remember the name Rick Mount. That's uh, who Glenn Rice reminds Lou Henson of with that shooting stroke. Mount was a great shooter at Purdue. They get it inside the middle. You notice what's happening right now with that set, that offensive set Michigan's using. Coming through, they couldn't hit it. It would have been spectacular and would have perhaps provided a lift. Right, on, this off, on this offensive set, notice how they're packing everything down inside. So they really get a height mismatch inside. With what, whether it be Mills or whether it be Vaught or whether it be Rice, they've got a couple inches on the guy guarding them. Griffin's got to take the shot. They won't. Robinson. Good ball fake. Vaught and Mills step outside along with Rice. Griffin's not being guarded. If he'll just move over, he can get a jump shot. Robinson. Misfiring, tap back not there. Anderson comes away with the rebound. So what the Michigan coaching staff preached all week, keep Illinois off the glass. Don't give them the rebounding opportunities. Let's see what happens down here at the offensive end now for Illinois. Gill has lost it on the turnover. Robinson comes back on Bardo. Lamille tried to go around. He lost control of the ball. Out of bounds, Illinois. And Lou Henson says Bardo is the finest defensive backcourt player in the Big Ten, and that showed you the example. If you can stop Ramil Robinson one on one in the open court, you have done some job. The Illini trailing by five. And not looking sharp on offense. Mills is standing straight up on defense. Hamilton trying to get into the scoring column. Anderson thought he was going to shoot. But from underneath Battle will 15 for Kenny Battle in this game. They go right to Griffin with Anderson trying to hound him lead pass too far in front but Mills hustles it down. Puts the ball behind his back. Now it's Robinson trapped as he comes down the baseline gets it back to Rice who hits on the drive quickly to battle Griffin tried to draw the charge Gill is open for the field goal. Now if the referee calls that consistently that way then it's good refereeing but there's no question that was an offensive charge in the out there in the midcourt area. Michigan up by three 47 44. It will be fought. Makes it 49 44. Third team all Big Ten player who's moved from a role player to a very consistent shooter. Leads the team in field goal shooting percentage. Henson will try Liberty. Michigan will counter with Higgins. Quick look in pass. And a reach back by Bardo. He commits the personal. Watch the Griffin screen here on battle. Well, what's happening? See, nobody's guarding Griffin. And when they don't guard Griffin, he does the wise thing. He sets the screen. 
one of the best guys to go ahead and screen is the man that's not being guarded because then there's no switch. Griffin is out right now, along with Rice. Fisher wanted to talk to Rice. Higgins replaces him at that shooting forward spot, and Caleb moves into the backcourt in place of Griffin. Robinson brings it up into the corner. Vaught is short. Mills with an offensive rebound, and it's Higgins with one. The Wolverines keeping it alive on the glass. They're just too big down inside for Illinois. Well, what we have are good big men beating good small men today. Battle missing. Liberty couldn't keep it in play. Michigan's ball. Good block out by Higgins to make room for Mills to be able to catch that ball. Rice will check back in. Nice that ball opportunity. Robinson doing a fine job of running the floor for the Wolverines. Higgins, three is short. And another, another offensive offense. rebound, and Hart couldn't get it to fall. Coming off is Bardo. Battle wanted to get moving on it. Bardo kept it himself, misfired. Look at Battle the was screened off. No chance for him to get into the glass. Now, Brent, I think that Michigan getting these offensive rebounds ought to put the ball back outside a little bit now instead of trying to bounce it right back up. They're starting to overpower Illinois and take more and more advantage of it. That jump hook is short, knocked away from Hamilton. It's going to be Michigan's ball. Great steal that time by Battle. He there. jumped back in and denied a scoring opportunity. There's an example. What they want a possession of the ball right now. They're getting a little tired. Here's Hamilton, and he gets himself on the scoreboard here in the second half with 14 minutes to go, and it's 51-46. Mills is very, very tired right now. And a reach-in foul against Smith. It's interesting to see Steve Fisher, how long he's going to leave Mills out there. He's going to take Mills out. It's a very good move because Mills is starting to get tired, not getting up on those boards. So he's been able to rotate Higgins, Hughes, Vaught, and Mills. Higgins steps out, Liberty with him. Hamilton trying to deny, bought the ball. Rice is being chased by Smith. They switch, and now Rice trying to get free on the other side. It'll be Higgins at the top. Good possession. He punches here. in now to Hughes. Hughes is short, and it's Bardo bringing it down for the line eye. It's Battle, and the foul was called as Higgins jumped out on battle and fouled him. That's John Higgins' second personal. The foul is charged to Michigan's number 24, Sean Higgins. His second personal. Higgins, that Anderson. Role, a for player for the Indiana Pacers. Pacers. Liberty out. Liberty has not been able to get it going here at all today. Liberty is scoreless. Anderson is scoreless in the second half. He has 11 for the game. Now it's Hamilton up with a jump shot. That's two field goals, and it's back to three. The Illini are devastating at getting a run going. They are so dangerous at running off a 12-2 or an 11-3. Michigan very aware of that. They've played him, and it's Hughes coming to distance. The big fella for the driving layup. And here's Hamilton again. Jam dead by Battle, and Mary Henson loved that one as much as anybody. Robinson back at the offensive end for the Wolverines. And he drew the foul on Hamilton. That's his second personal. Brent, a pretty good time to attack Illinois, a team that likes to press and keep you down on your end of the floor. If you get passive against this ball club, they'll just take the ball away from you. So a good job by Robinson to take the length of the floor. has returned. Mills Smith just got down. Mills got that about a minute and a half rest that he needed. He was really wearing down. Hey, 
Brent, we talked about comebacks. You're talking about the Syracuse game, the Louisville game, the Missouri game I mentioned. Also, Georgia Tech had this club down by 15, 16 points, and they battled back. So this is a team with uh, a record where they know they can come back when they get down. Anderson comes off with the miss, brings it, and it's battle, will stay down. Michigan comes away on the move with Robinson. Two on one, now two on two. Robinson keeps on coming, Illinois rebounds. And again, it was Anderson. Robinson probably should have hit Rice on that cross court. Now it's Bardo's turn off battle. He has control of it. They get it back to Gill. Gill spins, knocked away, and he's fouled by Robinson. Robinson has committed his second personal. Is he perhaps tired? No. Yeah, he's the one fella has not had a rest at all. And it's time now. Caleb is coming in. Let's see if Steve Fisher is recognizing that as well. Yes, he is. He's going to take Robinson out of there. I think this is a very good move. With 12 minutes to go, he needs to sit him down about the 10-minute mark. You know how many times you said good move by uh, Coach Fisher yeah. over there? You don't think he's an interim at all. No, sir. He is. Uh, he's been doing this throughout the tournament. Big for Offensive Kim. rebound. They're staying with it. Now Illinois starting to battle back with that hard work that has been the trademark of this team. Double down by Mills. Anderson muscling. Here's Gill. And here they come. They chase Caleb. Sean Higgins with a one-point lead brings it for the layup. The finger roll is not there, and now Illinois can regain the lead. They are getting back into sync. Their kind of game. And a foul is called on Caleb. Went on that last layup by Higgins. He did not concentrate on the rim. He threw the ball up and looked down at the defender. You have no touch when that happens. You can feel the run coming now by Illinois. Robinson is coming back in. Robinson returns with a timeout. Rice for the game, 14 points. He is 6 of 15 from the field for the Wolverines. Anderson's jump shot. Basket by number 25, Nick Anderson. Griffin back on the floor for Michigan, along with Mills, with Robinson, Rice, and Vaught. They're going back to their set offense now, trying to post up down low with that double stack. Dangerous pass. Griffin not being guarded. He's got to take up some slack, look for a shot. They punch inside to Robinson. Nice pass by Griffin. Basket by number 21. That's the dimension Robinson. that Griffin gives the Wolverines, which Higgins does not. But of course, on the other side, Higgins gives them that scoring opportunity, which they don't get here with Griffin. Griffin's guarding. Knocked it. away. No foul called. Gill has possession. Three seconds. No call. Loose. Battle goes diving for it. Michigan ball. Lead to Rice. Again, Griffith showing the role player that he is out there, Brent. Goes down on the floor to pick one up. They're going almost exclusively now with this double low offense. Against the double, he gets it into Mills, and they move to Vaughn. And Battle yanking away is fouled by Mills. Mills, third personal foul. That's, a, that's an exhaustion Battle's foul. You just get tired, you just Terry push Mills, off. Mills, his third, Michigan's fourth. If it comes down to physical condition, though, which of these teams is in the best I, shape? I like Illinois. I think it's one of the best condition teams. And of course, they're not as big, so therefore they don't have to carry those bodies around like Michigan has. Griffin trying to hound Gill right now. They punch into Hamilton. Hamilton comes in, jumps up over the taller man, and that's three field goals in the second half. And Hamilton Incredible. limping on that bad ankle, perhaps, again. Rice, he bangs the drum for the home run. The Hamilton's hurt. He, he obviously does not want to come out of this ball game, but he hurt himself. And he's been a real threat in that low post here over the last couple of minutes. You'll see him twist and turn in there. He probably comes down on it. Yep. As usual, down on an opponent's sneaker. How often do we see that? Irvin Small has replaced Hamilton. 
And Hamilton may be going. Yes, he's leaving to go back to the locker room for Illinois. We'll get a check on that when we can. Griffin again with good hands. Battle working hard on the inside. Gill gets Griffin in the air off the fake. Can't get it to fall, and Butt takes it away from Battle. Now it's Robinson. Three is short. Robinson saves it off Bardo. And I'm not sure that Butt realized it. It could have gone out of bounds. It would have been Michigan's ball. But Illinois turns it right back over. It's a two-point Michigan lead at the 849 mark. And as Small jumps out, he fouled Mills. And Ramil Robinson's going to have to start pacing the game a little bit, Brent. He's still going for the juggler. And now the clock becomes a little bit on his side. He's got to look for a little bit better shot. Give his big fellas a chance to rest a little bit on the offensive end of the floor, because they sure can't let down on the defensive end. Smith gives Bardo a rest for Illinois. Mills out high with the pick. Robinson coming in, and Small fouls him. I like that maneuver by Michigan. Whenever they can get Robinson on a switch with guys like Small or Hamilton, he's just too quick for him. We talk about interchangeable parts. This is one that is not interchangeable. Small could not stay with Robinson off that screen. Third team all big tenor. Had a great game, remember, in a losing cause last year in the NCAA against University of North Carolina. 29 points, six assists, five rebounds. But uh, there haven't been any losing causes so far in this tournament. 60 to 56, a four point Michigan lead now. Coming down to eight and a half minutes. He's looking for the steal. Here's Gill with a three. Rebound, Illinois. And Battle puts it down. 19 points for Kenny Battle. Again, sending four men to the board. Steal by Gill. Battle coming in for the field goal. Brent, you would think if a team sent four men to the offensive boards, they'd be easy to fast break against. But you can't because one man's always back. There's Kenny Battle just taking it on up to the hoop. So strong inside. Perhaps more importantly, that's the fourth foul on Mills. Watch this angle. And it will be Mills who will have to leave the game. He now has four fouls. And Battle up at that free throw line. Buries the three-point play at the eight-minute mark to put Illinois back ahead by one. Again, trying to go down in low. Robinson cut off, back out to Griffin. Rice. Anderson hounding him off the basketball. The fake comes Rice. through with his 19th point of the game. How about efficiency with the basketball? He only ever uses two or three dribbles and squares up to take that shot. The lead has changed hands 18 times here in this game. Make it 19. Larry Smith puts Illinois back ahead, 63-62. And Rice gets it right back. Number 41, Glenn Rice. Brent, it may help that Mills got his fourth foul. This is going to give him a legitimate rest. I see Lowell Hamilton coming back. And Anderson regains the lead That's for the Illini. Anderson. Great power down on the inside. Kenny Battle fighting for position against Vaught. Fighting over the top. Then working his way back again, asking for the call, but it's not there. And up here on this field goal, Battle has assessed his second personal. That is six on Illinois, five on Michigan here in the second half. 
Battle has shown a lot of respect for Ramiro Robinson not going over to double team very often today. Dangerous pass. Rice. Tap back. Not there, but Vaught comes out again and hits the hook shot. What a magnificent job Lloyd Vaught is doing. Off the glass. Push out is called against Robinson as Smith rose in the air, and it's number three on Emil. Now Hamilton will return for Illinois. Michigan six Probably went in and had that ankle taped up just a little bit tighter. It's going to really help Illinois having him back in because Hamilton was starting to get the feel for that low post. He was so effective. There he is in it. He goes right away. He contributes. He is so tough down there. He shoots the ball on the way up. Tough to block. Higgins is getting too flashy with the ball. Oh, let me back up. I'll tell you, the open court, he's been putting it behind his back, spin dribbles against this club, you're in trouble, and he just dunks it in my face. Yes, sir. He, he dunked it right in my face. Here it comes. Take this, Mr. Mr. Analyst. Yep. Right in my face. Sensational play, but I really think if he keeps fooling with the ball in the open court like that, He's going to get his pocket picked, but he didn't on that one. One thing, Billy, about him, he strikes me as the kind of player that you'd want on the floor against an Illinois team. Well, you get into that helter-skelter, wide-open style of game. Looks to me like he loves playing this style. Let's wait and see on that one. Six, ten. Anderson down low on Rice. Rice was doing a pretty good job. On the pass in, the pushing foul against Michigan. Danny Ferry concluded his college career at Duke with 34 points in a losing effort. Hamilton, not a good free throw shooter. Down around 56%. Some of the Seton Hall players doing some scouting. Ramon Ramos wondering, now what do I do against Mills and Vaught? Or suppose it comes up Lowell Hamilton. Someone just tipped him off. Well, that's a big mistake by Michigan to have a lane violation against a free throw shooter that shoots a very low percentage. You don't want to give him any better chances on the numbers. Darrell Walker is up there with Pookie Wigginton. The young men from New Jersey are proud and happy as well they should be. They were down 18 in the first half. This one has been close all the way. Michigan leading by one, 69-68. We're coming down toward the stretch, that final five-minute mark. It's Rice getting that touch. That's 23 points. He elevated his jump that time a little higher than he normally does on the jump shot that surprised Lowell Hamilton. Hamilton wanting the ball in the low post. A good double down by Rice. They punch into Anderson, and as he comes up, he was fouled. You heard Rice said, somebody's got to come on down here and help out a little bit. Instead, Glenn picks up his first person. And, Brent, what that was all about is the fact that Rice went over to double down on the low post Hamilton. If you do that, then one of your Our teammates Michigan, has Terry to fill Mills in the spot the that you vacated. And nobody came, so it was a good conversation by Rice. Not a complaint, just a little bit of instruction. Vaught sits, Mills has returned, and each player who comes off gets a little coaching over there from Fisher. He has talked to each of the players as he brings them off. He has just concluded over there on the side with Vaught, telling them exactly what he wants accomplished when they go back onto the floor. Anderson hitting the free throw. Lou Henson's wife watching as the Illini pull back to within one. Again, the double team not working because Michigan is well aware of how to have a man setting behind. There is Rice misfiring. Bardo looking for the open man, that tall off guard who can go back in and rebound or switch off on a taller man on defense. Now it's Gill. Over to Hamilton. Rises up with a jump shot. And Hughes came away. Lead pass for Higgins. And he's out of bounds. Well, in that case, Brent, it was a bad shot by Hamilton and probably not a wise pass in this particular case by Michigan. So they cancel each other off. Hamilton doesn't want to be shooting from that range at this stage in the game.
Gill punches in low, and Illinois regains the lead as Battle puts them up by one again, 72 to 71. Bardo is now primarily guarding Rice and when he doesn't get screened, so they've got their best defender on the man they think is going to take the key shots. Nobody open. So we've got a timeout. Real good coaching here by Steve Fisher. You normally would set a set play here, but he wanted to make sure, first of all, that they got the ball in bounds. A set offensive play. Don't be surprised to see something double coming up for Rice. Here he comes off the screen out top. Instead, Higgins will put it down and go for the runner. Rice can't tap it in, but it's back out to Mills. Wise move to throw the ball back outside again. You know, you're right about Higgins. He's got to be very mindful of where Rice is now in the flow of things. That's the guy you want handling the ball in the big situation. Here Taking he is. shots. Here he comes. Put it down and on the line. The 41, Glenn Rice. Again, we've got to talk about coaches pulling the right switches. And again, Steve Fisher Bound comes up on the money. Hamilton, his fourth personal foul. Goes inside. Rice comes across the lane. Well, he. Well, Lowell Hamilton said, Michigan, you know, nobody else Rice has stopped him in the one. tournament playing him fair and square. Let me grab his jersey and see what I can do with him. And that's the fourth foul on Hamilton. Rice has scored 25. Five rebounds. That'd be a great afternoon for anybody in the tournament. But that's just a, your average game for Clint Rice. You're averaging better than 30 in this tournament. And he's been doing it on the other end of the floor today, too, because he's been matched up an awful lot with guys like Anderson in battle. He's got Anderson right now. Now we're at that point where every trip is absolutely critical. Short, loose, and it's going to go now against Michigan. Like a foul on Robinson for reaching in. That's his fourth. That would be disastrous for Michigan, even though there's 330 to go, because you could just envision the Illinois press if it was up to Caleb by himself to bring it up. Now Fisher is talking to Caleb, even as you said that. He went back, warning him to get ready that he might need him. He's not going to send him in the game right now. He's going to leave Robinson out there. He's too important to the team with the four fouls. Brent, now's a great time if they make this free throw to double team Robinson and really hammer him over in the corner, hoping that he tries to break the double team and maybe picks up the offensive charge. So let's see if Battle just goes over and attacks him on this made free throw. Here we go. Now watch. Watch Time Battle. Game. Battle's looking for him. They go the other way to Griffith, which is smart. Lead to Mills, who helps him bring the ball down. Now it is over to Ramil. Here's Hughes. Michigan leads. Basketball number 55, Mark Hughes. Sensational play by Robinson, not to draw the charge. Bardo. Stolen by Robinson. Bardo coming back defensively. It's Rice. It's a four point Michigan lead. Time remaining, and Lou Henson will use a timeout. Down toward the 250 mark. Michigan leading Illinois by four, 78 74. Anderson under pressure. Michigan yanking it away. Releases to Rice, stolen by Gill. The three from Bardo. Not there, but it winds up in Battle's hands. And he hits the three to pull Illinois back to within one. Now that long pass by Terry Mills would have worked if you're up by eight. But by four, you need possession of the ball. So not a wise toss. Battle stalking Rice. Griffin looking for him. They get it into his hands. He's open off a screen, couldn't get it to fall. Rebound by Kendall Gill. Illinois can go ahead inside of two minutes. Hamilton outside for the left baseline. Puts the Illini up one. The 26 lead change we've had here this afternoon. Now, Michigan can realize one thing here. Griffin's not being guarded, so he's always an outlet man if you get in trouble. Timeout 
Michigan. And they have gone back to Sean Higgins off of Coach Fisher's bench here for the stretch. A little more firepower, an extra shooter, and someone who might sneak in and grab an offensive rebound and a putback. Exactly, Brent, because they knew Griffin wasn't going to take the shot. They'll probably bring him back in for defensive purposes. They'd like to get the hands, the ball in Rice's hands at least once. Bardo chasing him. Hughes to screen, rolls off the pick. Good hedge by Hamilton helping out. Inside to Mills who takes it. What a and rebound. gets it back on the inside with Hughes. A punch back for Michigan and a lead. And a, foul. and a foul on the inside. Boy, Hughes and Vaught and Mills have been something off the boards. You see the push right here on the shot. There was the push. But he pushed the lower body and it didn't alter the shot. Hughes comes in, nobody blocks him out. Great hands and power on the inside, and there is the push by Hamilton. Didn't and affect the shot. Lowell Hamilton fouls out of this game at the 109 mark. Hurts the club because it takes away that good inside post play, and here it is. What I anticipated, Griffith comes in, Higgins will go out. So he's gonna, he's gonna switch men for offensive and defensive ends of the floor. Larry Smith will replace Hamilton. Smith is 6'4", Hamilton 6'7". Brent, you notice that Higgins is on the sidelines there. Griffiths comes in for defense. Higgins is going to stand right over there on the side to get back in on offense. Number 55, Mark Hughes, shooting one. Hughes gives Michigan a two-point lead, coming down toward one minute left in regulation. Back screen for Kenny Battle to get him open. And a steal by Mills, throws deep, and laying it down is Smith. And Lou Henson will use a timeout right now. Inside of a minute, he'll call timeout, and he will set a play here. And in this situation, you would expect Illinois to punch it down. They have 27 seconds left here on the shot clock. They know that Michigan has at least one possession coming here in this situation. Exactly, and I think what they're going to be looking is a back screen for Kenny Battle. situation with Hamilton out of the game. Who do you think that Henson might favor here with the ball? I think they've got two good choices. Gill from the outside as a secondary, but I think we're going to see Kenny Battle with some back screens trying to get him the ball down in low. Nick Anderson on the other side looking on the miss shot to crash the boards from the weak side. But the way it looks to me, Kenny Battle should be the first choice here. He has scored 27 here this afternoon. Anderson with 17 for the game. As for Glenn Rice, he leads Michigan with 28 points. And Higgins has weighed in with 12 off the bench. Hughes has scored nine, none bigger than the two just a moment ago, on an offensive rebound. So 42 seconds up here on the shot clock, 50 seconds left in the game. It's a two point lead by Michigan. It's going to be Mills playing Battle. And I think Battle is going to be the first guy to get a chance to put up a shot here. Comes across the lane, they miss it. Here he comes. He wants it on the inside. Rises up with a jump shot, and it falls. Kenny Battle ties it. Now there are 28 seconds to go. One timeout left. Pressure from Illinois against the ball. Quickly they get it up in Robinson's hands. 
Fisher barks a command at him from the sideline. He's going to go ahead and play for the last shot. No timeout. They set the play. Robinson, if they can hit it, they'll go to the championship. Mills outside the three. It's Higgins. The win. Sean Higgins with an offensive rebound, but there is one second on the clock. And Brett, remember the Indiana game. There were two seconds left to go in that one. Remember the ball game where Henson threw the ball down the sidelines for Anderson to hit the jumper. He would like to get one more second back on the clock. He's not going to get it. The rebounding from the weak side. Mills gets enough power to get it up there. Nobody blocking out. Higgins, who has been the free spirit all day long, puts it back in for the great shot and heads on out of there. You know, it was kind of funny. Look at, look at Fisher. Little body English. Darling, it's mine. Still, baby, undefeated, untied, but not yet the heavyweight champion, huh? They'll have to sweat out one last yeah. second here. Now, remember in the Indiana game, for those that saw it, Bob Knight decided not to guard the man that was throwing the ball inbounds. I would be surprised if Michigan does not put a man on whoever is going to make this toss to make that pass, which will have to go over half court, a more difficult one. I remember when Higgins came back off that bench, one of the things we said, Billy, is that he might be able to scoop up an offensive rebound and get a putback. So we have got to say that this Michigan coaching staff has done an outstanding job here this afternoon. They have made the right substitutions all game long. Illinois beat Michigan twice this season, decisively, but not here this afternoon. Well, and we thought early on in the ball game, Brent, uh, with both of us having seen Michigan in the regionals, that it was a different team emotionally. There is Bo. He's becoming a basketball fan. Happy birthday to him, too. Celebrating his 60th birthday here this afternoon in Seattle. And if they win it, Bo Schimbeckler's the kingmaker. <laughs> Remember one year that when uh, Don Canham played Slippery Rock in that football stadium and maybe they'll schedule a basketball game in that football stadium. I knew they'd take they'd guard the man taking the ball out of bounds. You want to make it a tough target. They try oh, to get the Mills charge. almost fouled him back there. You've got to be careful and that's it. Michigan upsets Illinois. They'll play Seton Hall for a national championship.